Um, so let's get started <clears throat> on today's class. Welcome everyone. Thank you to everyone who joins the uh, live classes. I really appreciate it. Though I do put up the, um, the recordings uh, for anyone who missed it, who's in different time zones, I completely understand. There's thousands of you who watch the videos, um, the recordings when they go up. So I think that would be absolute madness if thousands of people joined uh, the, the live, right? Um, so it's a nice manageable handful, but I do like when there's a, um, you know, a, enough of a turnout where we're getting multiple answers to the questions and people are um, engaged in the discussion, asking questions. Because the more that you guys come, the more questions you ask. If I even get to the questions, the more you guys post or, or the more you guys are involved, the more rich the class will be. So um, I know I'm here talking, giving away free knowledge, but it's also nice when you guys <laughs> are present, adding to the uh, classes yourselves. I'm just weird today. I guess I just decided to wake up and just be weird. It happens. Those are like once or twice a week where I'm just weird for no reason. So, uh, let's get started. I don't know what I was talking about just now. Please go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon to join us on Reddit. The Reddit is where I pull paintings from and put them on my, um, on my Photoshop. And um, that's where we post the challenges. For some reason, the challenge narrative got cropped really badly. I, I, don't, I don't know what Reddit's problem is. It's got a really bad bug where if I were to edit a post because I edited and added the chain, uh, the, the new due date, which is the 29th of September, Tuesday the 29th, next Tuesday, the challenge, book cover challenge is due. And it just deleted everything once I amended that. Um, so I'm not really sure why I did that. But soon, sometime, uh, I will post the October challenge, which, as I mentioned before, is like a creepy creature challenge, which we do every year. Uh, but the uh, uh, twist to this one is that it's an element that embodies the fall. Um, so I'm doing a similar but higher tier or higher, more advanced tier for my apprentices on Patreon, a similar challenge to this. You guys are getting the creature challenge. Um, and I think it's like something a little more fun. Um, and it can be painted or illustrated in any way. It can be cell shaded, it can be full illustration, but you still have to have lighting and rotation and physics and three dimensional stuff. Like you can paint, I'll, I'll post up some examples, but you can, you don't have to blend basically. Uh, you can keep your lines as long as you do a good job in completing the whole illustration. So I am changing it up as I go, as I write it. I feel like um, the fall challenges should be fun. Uh, so I am keeping the requirement that it is an illustration, which is why I say don't get started, you know, until I actually post the final bulletin up, um, uh, because it's going to keep changing until I actually post it. So, but, but yeah, the amend, amended change is that um, it's going to be lines approved, lines acceptable, it doesn't have to be a full illustration that you're blending, but you can do that. Um, um, I might not, I might make it so that you don't have to, or can't illustrate at all, it's just self-shaded. Um, anyway, uh, so if you want to support my class, you want to support my channel, you can do so on Patreon, a dollar a month, that's all I'm asking from you guys. Um, for anyone who is interested in doing that, I understand that a dollar a month is something that you just don't want to do, um, that it might be that extra cup of coffee you can get. So it's not that I'm demanding this from anyone who's watching, but anyone who wants to send support my way, I am not going to be shortening my videos for any sponsorships. I'm not going to be editing my content or changing the way I teach for anyone. Um, so if you guys want like that and you want to continue the classes and keep them the way they are, um, you can help us stay independent by supporting through Patreon. That's it. Let's get started. Um, so <laughs> I told you guys, I'm just going to be weird today. Um, so yes, I play RuneScape, not really, and League. That's about it. It's a really, really bleak existence. Um, what was I about to open up? Right, Porsche Studio. So I'm going to open up Portrait Studio really quickly um, because I need to show you guys a quick little situation we have here. Okay, so while that is loading, let me see if anyone's asking me anything. So it's only missing the due date. 
Do submissions have to be color? Yes, they do. Must be. Uh, like fall Pokemon, exactly. The write-up can be read in full once on her previous video, so look at the comments for a link in the video of the timestamp. Yes, thank you for the person who found that. Um, you just have to go to the Reddit post um, and, uh, and, and uh, click on the Reddit post announcement on the Instabrack page right here and um, go to this comment and if you miss this month's brief you can see it here uh, I am sorry I have no idea how all this got deleted <sighs> okay so we have some issues here um, I talked about this last class I really wanted to look at it but I feel like it's got a lot in here that we could do um, and I didn't want to just rush it. So last class, what I did was remember I darkened the whole scene, and I honestly don't, I honestly don't remember what last class was. Um, let me just find it. Uh, what did I do last class? I, I, I did a dark scene, right? Yeah. Um, what's the matter with me? Yes, I did. So if you guys remember this one. What I did was I darkened the entire environment and showed you guys how darkening the character doesn't mean that the character is less important. In fact, the character will become more important having given them a realistic environment within which to exist. The character is now realistic, is now believable. So I think I just had a before and after here. Um, and, uh, you know, Noobs, I'm, I'm just going to use this term, it's too savage for you, I'm sorry, wake up, if you're a noob sometimes and you need to learn the fundamentals so you don't have to be a noob, and being a noob is a beautiful thing, because, or saying, calling yourself a noob is a beautiful thing, because all you have to do is expose your mistakes to improve really, really fast. When I'm booking private tutoring and a student applies for private tutoring, what I do is I make them paint something for me with zero reference. And I pretty much just encourage them to reveal as many mistakes as they, as, as is as is possible for them. W show me what you got. Just like bear it all. And I tell them that the reason why this is absolutely fundamental is that it reveals what you don't know. And if we know that, we know where to go and you improve so much faster. So some students like to fight that. The ones that book with me and pay thousands of dollars, they they end up hiding some stuff from me. Um, and I'm just like, you know, you're here paying, you're here paying the actual price for improving and you're hiding, you know, you know, I can tell I've been doing this for almost a decade. I can tell when a student uses reference and a student is hiding their, their and it reveals to me even more the type of student they are. So I, I still can diagnose them based off their behavior. But when you call yourselves noobs, it's a beautiful thing. So it's a very, very noob thing to do. It's like noob is not just being bad at art, it's a mentality, right? It's the way you think. So being a noob at art means that you are still in this really, really hyper sensitive, hyper nervous anxiety, um, you know, to, to, to the way you just the way you work, the way you apply your, the way you show your work, the way you do the work, the way you, the subject matter that you choose. Your tastes as an artist it's a, it's a mentality being a noob um, <laughs> so one of the things one is that one of the typical beginner mistakes or noob mindsets let's call them the noob mindsets is that <clears throat> you uh, want to sh as much do as much as possible to the character you're drawing and you'll you, you're gonna automatically end up with a good character so who here thinks like that? Um, and I think all of you think like that. Um, I, I think like that too as well. I mean, where I am right now with my work and my skills is significantly less than someone better than me. So I still have that mentality. Just, you know, just hammer out as much detail as possible, as much contrast, as much. And sometimes we see extremes of this. Um, zooms in and adds eye flex. <laughs> Or freckles, you know, highly detailed freckles, fre freckles casting shadows, um, or something like that, something ridiculous, or, you know, it, or like, you know, really, really overdoing the, the detail or the contrast, or, you know, something like that, is a very noob thing to do. And you've seen a common thread in my, 
you know, my, my recent videos, is that I've darkened a lot. I darkened, I darkened, I darkened. This one, I didn't touch it. It was just because of, because it was about three, three, three quarter of your rotation. I darkened. Um, this was about anatomy and portraiture and whatnot. Uh, this was for the apprentices, but I did darken a lot. I darkened this. Um, I darkened a lot for this one. Uh, so what, what we're doing here is it's a common noob ideology. It's a common noob doctrine. It's like a, a thing about being early in your art. You think you're overdoing, you're overfeeding the exposure and then you know, you end up with a really, really bad painting. You forget about the room. So you darken the, 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 the priests in the back and you thought that that was enough to address the fact that it's a dark room. You made the background black and you thought that that was enough to make it a dark room. No, light has a texture to it and light, light's texture, if I could be poetic, is ambient. Light texture is um, is the silhouette or the negative space of soft brush. So when we're talking about a slow transition into the light source, we're talking about things like if you can follow my, my, my thinking right now and just, just close your eyes and just imagine what I'm saying. Light isn't bright until there's no more light. No, light is only bright when you get closest to the light source. And if you have a room within which is a you know handful of candles on either side of a throne then you know that there is a point in the room where things are most bright that means by inversion of your of your logic that there are things that gradually get to the point where it is most dark so why aren't you guys radiating the values out of your light source and creating this the thing that I do every class now I've done it which is darken the room basically and I eventually delete with uh, sorry, with soft brush. So when I'm darkening the room like this, right? So I usually use darken, and I usually put darken on a color, but because it's just a black room with orange, I really don't need a light environment color like that purple I usually do for outdoor scenes, moonlit scenes. I usually don't uh, do it unless we're, we're talking about those kinds of environments. So because it's a black room or dark room, the background is black, you're signaling that the, there really isn't much of an atmospheric color. So I darken the room. I don't need to color balance, as I told you guys. I, I might need to later, but because we're talking about a big red chair and an orange um, bear hide or whatever, then I'm not, those are both brown and red there's a they're both within the warm realm so I really don't need to color balance uh, that green is already desaturated it's not really a screaming green it's it is a little bit closer to warm and warm dark the shirt is already pretty warm so that's one thing you did right was balance all your colors or choose good colors but let's darken this scene and erase just where there is light source so what did I just describe? I said that every light source is a gradual light source. There's no light source that is as bright as it, as it was at its hottest point. And that's what you're doing wrong, is that you have absolutely no weakness to this light source. That it's just 100% strong all the way through. Everything is illuminated. And that's just wrong. That's just not how it works. So not only am I darkening a collective, you know, motion to darken the room outside of the weak, albeit visible candles, I'm going to add a haze to the candles. And that haze is gonna come from the color of the candles, which is this orangey golden color. And what that's going to do is because there are some of these, uh, my mic is working, right? <clears throat> because some of these uh, candles are behind the chair, the chair will be silhouetted to a point. So I'm going to just throw those in. So I'm going to give the haze, right? 
and I'm going to give every little candle its own little haze or bloom or glow or whatever. And things are still not as bright as they need to be. But I am going to get my blocking eraser, which is my blocking brush on eraser, and I'm going to darken the chair. Yes, the, the armrests will cast a shadow, but right now I'm trying to build the depth here. There's a depth system going on. So that haze is stopping right at... And behind the chair because there are some candles behind and the candles that are not behind are not strong enough to cancel out the silhouette the majority of the candles are behind the chair these look like they're way in the back they're not on the same horizontal line except for maybe this one and this one this one and this one which is in front same thing with the sword Okay, so now it feels like we have this distance between the object, the background, um, the object in the foreground, the main character, and the objects in the background. Alright, so now I'm going to darken the chair a little bit. Your brushwork is very, very um, noob mentality too, which is, again, I'm going to just do as many of these little brush strokes these you know strokes of the brush these the art the dance of the artist you know i'm gonna do more and more of these and by logic you know everything should look right right wrong it's not because you moved your brush that things are that are that, you know that's all it took at one point or another you realize everything you were doing in art isn't all it takes you know, remember that moment in life when you thought you painted something nice and you saw a really, really awesome painting and you're like, it turns out everything I've been doing so far is not enough. You got to just get over that pain, the pain of that. I, I remember that moment in my in my youth um, when I realized I, w I just sucked. <laughs> I realized after beating myself, like really, really just pushing as far as I could to finish a painting. And then I was just browsing through DeviantArt and I was like 18 and I saw this amazing painting and then this painting that I had just finished working 20, 26 hours on, I counted, um, looked like crap and I'm like, really? And you know, I'm just this mess. I thought I really accomplished something and I, it was good to, you know, appreciate myself for a second there. But then I just really, really set in whether or not I had, you know, the self-love they, they say you should have, of course. But if you want to be a good, at, good at something, you have to have a lot of humility too. So the pride faded and then it was replaced with this sense of just failure <laughs> because I saw that everything I had done so far was not enough. And now that I'm older, I know that it wasn't that I wasn't good enough. It was that I wasn't efficient enough while painting. I wasn't respecting the fundamentals. I thought if I could just be me long enough, I'd be good and still be me. Um, and that only goes, takes you so far. So that point where you realize, you know, everything that I've been thinking of is just not enough. That should hit you and you should welcome it. Rejoice that day that it happens because it means from then on you will never be the same artist again. You will be better, you will be more strict, you will respect the fundamentals, and you'll just be stronger and you, you, you have thicker skin. And a lot of the people that are, do really well with critique are people who have had that puberty, I call it, of artists, artists' puberty, where they realize. You know, I'm just not, I think I'm the shit. My mom said I'm the shit, but it turns out I'm not. <laughs> it turns out my mom fucking lied to me. Not that my parents, my parents didn't know I drew. It was illegal to draw in my house, but, um, or whatever it was. Um, but yeah, you're not as good as your mommy thought. So where do we go from here? Well, painting a brush and moving the brush around isn't all it takes. It takes a little bit of thought. It takes a little bit of knowledge, a lot of knowledge. It takes some understanding of the texture you're applying that paintbrush to. And here you use the same size brush, here you use the same size brush, 
Here you were stroking as if you were creating a rock texture on the side of the mountain, but it was fur. And over here you were just dabbling or whatever it is, stippling the brush as if it was some kind of grassy, mossy texture. Wrong, wrong, wrong. <sighs> so that's what I'm saying is that moving your brush around isn't enough to make something look good. Understand the texture you're going for. How can your brush that you chose, the brush itself, the type of brush, and how are you moving that brush going to help you make that texture read? So two things, the type of brush and how you move the brush. Write that back to me. Are the things that define good brush work. Um, then there's the over-encompassing knowledge um, of, of fundamentals and what fundamentals do and, and, and edges and how to stop when, it's the, when there's an edge. There's no light, you know, after that edge turns away from the light. That surface area is blocking all the light, so there's no brushwork in that area. But you are doing brushwork in dark areas, light areas. It's, it's a mess. So... Um, this is what I mean when I say, you know, that's why I wanted to talk about it today, is that you are just throwing brush strokes everywhere. Another noob mentality, noob mindset <clears throat> mistake, new beginner mistake, we can call it to be a little more friendly, but I want to use the term noob because I know you guys hate that word. It's kind of always lingering in the back, but I say, I, you know, fuck it. Use that word as much as you can. It means you are you will escape the fog of noob that much faster. So I'm using my my uh, uh, brush stroke now that I balance the light sources, and I figured out some depth to what is in the foreground, what is in the background, what is this, what is that. Now I'm gonna get my my uh, smudging brush, which is my number four go-to brush. And I'm just trying to cancel out that negative, um, the negative impact of your quote unquote brushwork. And trust me, trust me, I know, I know how savage I'm being right now. And I know how rough I'm being. Trust me, it's, it's part of the lesson. Okay. So I'm just canceling this. And you have a, you know, you have a good eye for what you, what it is that the, object needs so that you added that rim light you added the light that the fur needs um you have a good eye for your intentions were in the right spot but they were not executed properly maybe because you weren't bothered to look up a reference maybe because you just wanted to start drawing and feel good about yourself there's a lot of reasons you know just sometimes it's just my your brain says draw 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 bitch and you just have to pick up a brush and just start drawing or else you just don't want to live anymore. I get that. I get that. Um, that just might be it. You were just rushed into, you know, the feeling of being a painter. Now I'm going to darken this little fella to the room. I don't care if he's the main character. I could care less right now who, who he is. The light wins. The light is king. So the light says this room is dark enough that he's not that visible. So, okay, I must listen to the light. All of this back here looks super, super, super symbolic. Um, it looks like Mount Rushmore or something. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on in the back, but that needs to be darkened too. Actually, the whole thing can be selected apart from the staff, which could also use more silhouette, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to darken that back area so that the depth and the room is complete, and you'll see what I mean. I'm taking no prisoners today. Alright, that stuff in the background, those people can just be slightly visible, they're not that important. The candle lost its glow, so now that I still have my, um, my select, I'll just reintroduce that back. Alright, so the room now makes some sense. And... I have to, I do have to copy paste back because I darkened the candle. Couldn't go around selecting every candle though. So, paste. So I do need that candle to be more visible. 
and I'm just using shift and dragging down to get a rectangular eraser or the candle. Right, so those guys in the back now are nice and dark and out of the way. <clears throat> okay, so now that we've balanced and darkened the whole room as needed, I'm gonna do a bit of staging. The foreground should be a bit darker. Again, it's part of this dark scene. So now let's talk about what the impact is of this light. So in order for us to know what this light can do, we have to give it the magnitude that a light in any scene does. We take a picture of a candle, there's a point in the center of the candle where it is hottest and whitest. And that is when you use no man's land values, which are like the white whites. You never use those on skin, on textures or anything. Anything that glows, you are allowed to use it. Anything that doesn't glow, you never use white. So we obviously have candles here. So we're gonna use that. Okay, just looking at my navigator to make sure everything makes sense. And then now I'm just gonna start bringing in that glow. I might just do this with Dodge Tool just to rush the process. Highlights, okay. So who here has the, um, who here wants to volunteer themselves as tribute <laughs> and talk about what it is that they don't like about their noob mentality? First of all, who here wants to admit that they have noob mentality? I know you all do, <laughs> but I'm curious as to who is willing to, 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 uh, to talk about it. So what's one noob thing that you do that you shouldn't be doing and you know you shouldn't be doing? Let's talk about it because it might give someone else the courage to just step forward and talk about how their bad habits are affecting their ability to improve. So the thing about candles is that they're used for all kinds of subject matter, but usually they add a sense of mystery or romance to a scene. So when you wanna take your take your boyfriend or girlfriend to a romantic dinner, you're, they're not <laughs> using fluorescent light, <laughs> fluorescent light bulbs in the middle of a in the middle of a dining table. No, you use a nice warm candle. It's like a warm elegantness to its weakness. The fact that it's weak is why we go to that. The fact that fluorescent lights are pale, white, and strong is the fact why we're drawn away from them. They're not very forgiving and they hurt the eyes. Plus candle light is soft. It makes everyone look pretty. So you look, you know, everything is more romantic. So why would you not use soft brush to work on candles, right? <clears throat> But let's move forward. La, what is, I add pores. I make, um, Katie says, I make eyes glow tacky as all heck. I avoid form studies because they don't have cute faces like a freaking toddler and eating faces. Yeah, exactly. Like the faces are um, entertainment free. It's like you need to have your, you know, your, what's that thing that toddlers hold that, that shakes like a maraca? Um, it's like, that's what you guys need. You guys have to have a toy while studying or else you guys are not interested. So that's a very, very, very noob mentality. I go too heavy on color. Um, Corey says, I still have major line dependency even though I know how to build form. Um, yeah, sometimes it's a choice, right? That sometimes you choose to stay in that mentality. I will avoid hands at any cost. <laughs> you and me both, TKN. <laughs> I also over-render hair and over-blend skin texture. Like new mentality. I over-plan and rely too heavily on references, which makes all my work feel stiff, inorganic, and boring. I need to study photography better and more figure drawing. My roast continued, Katie says. Damn, Katie. I am bad at expressions. Everyone looks like a bored piece of wet toast. <laughs> you need to watch some of the expression videos. Make sure you message me on Discord so I can send them to you. Um... Masterpiecing and avoiding masterpiecing and avoiding basic studies. Guilty. I almost never draw backgrounds because I'm bad at it. But uh, but this way I never improve. Yeah, <clears throat> I like putting a lot of sparkly sparkles in the eyes. Yes, eyes, eyes, eyes. Very very new mentality. I don't put all my effort into smoothly rendering value and traditional at least. 
So, <laughs> Katie destroying herself. Um, so I really appreciate everyone who mentioned all of that stuff. So you can see that you who's listening, who's avoided studies, you can see how it is very, very commonplace to suffer from these insecurities. It does not mean that it is licensed to, um, you know, build this unnecessary pride uh, that you may have and avoid, um, you know, like protecting your weakness with pride. The superego loves to assume that its choices are founded in dignity and you know that it, it's like its choices are respectable just because your insecurity is attached to your pride doesn't mean that it's a right insecurity you know what i'm saying like it's valid no it's not valid um not when you're trying to improve quickly not when you have to fight your parents in order to prove to them that art is the thing you want to do not when you have the world writing against you to get better um not when you're fighting yourself and your bad habits and your and your bad <sighs> work ethic not when you know there's no excuses there's no time to waste so stop i won't tiptoe i won't tiptoe around um uh your your, your your feelings and your emotions and your ego i could care less about it and and you shouldn't either because you are killing yourself you are limiting your potential and you're killing your dreams effectively if your dreams are tied to art so as as is with every kung fu movie when the student learns they learn humility first they learn that you know it's not about you and that's the best that that's the best thing to do so mental noob mentality does come from that insidious presence of pride in your work um there's two there's different types of pride remember i'm talking about the one that the, what was that comment from a while ago on Reddit? I don't know who showed it to me, Kyle or Finn, but it was just this direct attack at the person critiquing them. Like they were angry um, and they were just mad anybody critiqued them, even though they went to the Reddit where you go on the internet to get critiqued is, is my Reddit. And then they just go on this channel where you get, you know what you're getting but they just got so angry. That's the type of pride I'm talking about. I'm not talking about your love for yourself or your love for your, you know, your hobby or your love for art, no. Um, and you guys will see, I'm here for, for your education, for your benefit. My mental health as well, I love teaching. If I don't teach, I'm gonna fucking kill myself, <laughs> I'll die. Um, but, uh, but I, you know, outside of that, I, I, I want you guys to improve and I want you guys to get better. Um, so, Zarek, save. Um, oh, save. Oh my god. Yes, thank you. I love you. <laughs> god, what would I have done? That would crash. That would have been a lot of work I lost. Thank you, Harrison. You are this the best. I could kiss you right now. Uh, it's not hard. To, uh, it's hard to not attach your work to your ego like a tender organ. Yeah, absolutely. But it's doable. It's doable. So let's talk about the light that comes in into the throne. So we've done a lot so far. Let's move forward. As you can see, this character is now even more interesting because he, he's barely visible in this room and in this light source that you so cautiously chose and lit, right? So I'm going to start casting a shadow of the arm rest. I don't want it to be perfectly straight. Maybe I'll just do a little, a little bloop like that. And I'm going to limit it, I'm going to stop it at the character, because I'll give the character his own individual response to the light. I'm also going to show how the buttons reject the light gradually. You know, how they're pressed inward. And that's, it's like a little technique if you've ever watched it. I, I just want to show off my arts and crafts knowledge. So basically what you do is you get a piece of wood and then you put the cushion on top and then you get the buttons or the fabric of your choice and then you actually screw in the buttons into the piece of wood which compresses the cushion underneath so that results in like this dimpling of all the buttons so they don't just sit on top like a sticker they actually dimple inward all right so i'm just trying to show that and it's just radial shading remember we all studied this before it's radial shading and that's all it really is you're just slowly dropping the value into the point where the screw met the wood behind the um cushion. <laughs> okay. Um 
at one point or another, like I had to learn how to reupholster something. I'm not sure why <laughs> I had to learn it. So there you have it. Um, I'm going to do another layer because I don't want to delete my current one. And it was at 12 in the evening, 12 at night. And I had this old chair and I had been staring at that messed up chair for so long and I had an old curtain and I said, you know what, tonight's the night I, I learn how to reupholster a chair. So that's the story. <clears throat> All right, so radial shading. And I'm just slowly drop. So I'm automatically by just erasing away with this radial shading technique, I'm automatically rendering. I don't have to blend. I don't have to drop to the lowest point. I don't have to go in here picking new colors. Do you guys notice me picking colors a lot? Especially when I'm critiquing because I don't need to. That's the point. Is that I, it's all about choosing the right value in erasing or deleting by, you know, using negative space to your advantage. So this is just because of the lights that are coming in. This could easily be a cast shadow that goes up because it could be these guys casting the shadow. So, you know, it's really up to you. I like this one. But I also like the fact that we get to frame the character instead of cancel out, you know, that much of the of the chair. See? So it's it's kind of like a... So that it's hard to choose which one. It's really just up to the artist what they want to choose. So I'm gonna just soften it. I kind of like the first one where the light is coming down. That way we see the character and it would explain why there would be light around the character. I didn't yeah, that was just um, extra brush work from the side. All right. So I'm deleting anywhere where there is extra bleed around. Because I already addressed the fact that the candles are doing their thing. I painted the light source. I, I took care of that mess. <clears throat> Oh my god, we love a Julie Andrews from Santa Music with Karen. <laughs> okay, so I'm just trying to be extra careful. It's not going to be that sharp a shadow because it's multiple candles and they're just everywhere. Um, so the reason why I didn't want to choose this one, and I want to choose the one where the light is going down that way, is because now we're going to, I mean, we could cheat it in, but now we're going to be adding the light for the character. And it is a very, very simple process. You're just illuminating the far corner of the character's, far quarter of the character's head with light, leaving the front face or the front part of the character's face in darkness. And that's just because the lights are coming from the side. And you can block this in and blend it later. Just do what you got to do to just apply the paint and address the edges and the geometry. You don't have to, you know, go crazy with the blending just yet. Remember, block first. Don't listen to the little demon that's asking you to blend right away because that is just damaging the form. So give the blending a chance, um, I mean, the blocking a chance to really establish the form first. And it's hard to tell if this is a short man. I know he's got like some kind of doodles on his face. But um, it's hard to tell if it's a short man or a child um, at certain angles. Just like that guy from, uh, just like Five from, from Umbrella Academy. How is he so old yet so young? Like how did they manage, they, they really, really got lucky casting that actor. Like, 
Isn't Five the most handsome child actor you've ever seen in your life? Like, he is gorgeous. And wouldn't it be so cool if, like, when he got older, um, they cast him as, like, one of the Disney princes? That would be awesome, too. Sorry, I really need to do an after hours because I just, like, want to talk to you guys today. <laughs> All right, so I'm just finding where there are points in the clothing. that are catching the light. And it's okay, I don't need to do anything apart from this because the character has been darkened. They've been had been darkened. <clears throat> Definitely some age dysphoria, yeah. But have, has anybody seen Umbrella Academy or is it just a little on me? But really, Google him, uh, number five from Umbrella Academy, and just look at that, like, you know, strange, but not uncanny. I wouldn't call it uncanny. He's still very beautiful character, very beautiful person, but I wouldn't say, um, it, it, it's like, how did they find a guy who, <laughs> anyway, I digress. Let us move forward. Okay, so now got all that set up. <clears throat> Doesn't have to be crazy. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. Um, I guess I I I, I flattened the scene. Let me save. Um, now I'm going to just radially drop. See this area, this little pocket where no light comes in, not even bounce light. I'm going to radially drop in that. Okay, so there are other things that we could do to wake the scene up. There's candlelight behind and underneath the floor. So I'm going to delete where the legs of the chair are just to let some of that light in. I do like the chair design. I like that you didn't noob out and just draw a basic chair. I like how you looked up a reference for the chair. And then the cast shadow, ooh. Best part about a light is the cast shadow. And then the um, the actual cast shadow here. And then the foot. You don't actually have to draw the cast shadow. It's just the light of the, on the floor is what's catching the light. But because technically the other foot is also the other leg of the chair is also casting a shadow so you don't really show a cast shadow unless there's fog to reveal the ray of the light right so this is the other leg and this is the other shadow it's the floor that's receiving understand right and it's supposed to be lighter the further you get so i'll just um just lighten it that way. And then I'm going to erase just to show how the light isn't going to get all the way underneath. And I'll do the other side. So merge down, save. No, merge down, save, new layer. Okay, so the next. <clears throat> leg which is I'm trying to copy the other leg waiting at the foot I'll do this quickly and then we'll be done so illustrating is that thing that you guys accredit to pros and one day I'm going to get so good with that illustrating um, you don't have to wait for that one day. Illustrating is a mentality, right? It's a pro mentality. So let's say that it is the opposite of what you would normally do. An illustrator would not delay uh, establishing the light source as, you know, the primary light source and its effect on the characters. Uh, an illustrator, a professional illustrator, would plan and find references for everything that they need. 
um, meaning that they were prepared for the brush, what is expected of their brush, per the textures that they prepared for by finding the references. <clears throat> okay, a professional illustrator would understand what kind of light environment they need. Right, so they'd be aware of how dark the room is, the time of day, the color palette, the, you know, all of that wonderful stuff. I'm going to start smudging away at this unusual brush pattern. It's like in your mind you saw what candles do and then your interpretation was stipple the brush. You know, it's, it's not really what they do. They, they kind of swirl, the wax swirls on its way down. It, gets obstructed it, I would say that it is more blurred than it is because it's, it's got that subsurface scattering to it this big pile of wax mixed with dirt or, or sand or whatever it is so both dirt or sand or I don't know what else could be you know holding up these candles rubble I'm not sure you haven't really decided have you so it's hard to, to tell <clears throat> I'm going to let this cast shadow be a little bit more ambient. And I'm going to use on multiply the red of the um of the chair to continue that button texture. And the buttons really would not be illuminated um, in any way apart from in relation to the light. So the buttons should pretty much be dark and just have a response to the light source nearby. And you've got these big, you know, stars almost and around your character when you should really just be doing that, if anything, if the light even reaches that. A little bit goes a long way. Just know what the object is. Know what the object is, is doing in relation to the primary. Everything goes back to the primary light source, which is why I'm always talking about it. And then this fur is fur. So anytime you're talking about an organic texture like fur, hair, Wool, you know, anything like that. It catches the light very, very quickly because it's it, the light is traveling on the mini hairs sitting on top. You're really getting a lot of that subsurface scattering effect, which just means that the hair is so thin, the light is traveling a lot on the surface hairs, bouncing around or maybe just x-raying through it. And that would be all that's really expected of you, and I would just smudge away the rest of this stuff, maybe a little bit here on the bear's fur, on the head of the bear. I'm going to be careful with that because it's too far, so I wouldn't let it eat up that much. And then the sword, um, so I'm not sure if you have a value in front or behind. The sword is pretty opaque. It doesn't have to be this dark. I only darkened it this much for the texture. So it could be a very, very basic. Actually, yeah, let me just do that. Oh, shit. Wrong layer. So I'm just going to give a basic starting value. And I'm going to think about some kind of ambient presence. Maybe half the sword is in shadow of some kind. And then just some basic bars of light on the sword. Nothing extreme. And the hilt, or whatever that part is called. The hilt, right? The handle is the hilt. That this little thingy? No, that's the handle. What's this part called? I forget. And it's got a shadow too. Though it's gonna be hard to see that shadow, to be honest.
Maybe it's a broken sword. I don't really know. <laughs> um, any object that gets light on it, you just get the yellow of the light source. And a candle casts a shadow on itself, so it's got a little, got a little halo around it. Um. So this, there is a lot more I want to do. There's a lot of extra light I want to weaken, so I want to I want to also fix the character as well. But I hope this has kind of given you an idea of the responsibility you have when illustrating, and the way you have to change the way you think as an artist. You, you can't think like a noob anymore. You could probably get away with being a noob, being a character artist, right? Because if you're doing a character design and it's a turnaround and you have to show all the detail of the character design, then you know no one can really judge you and there is no environment and there's just a basic universal light source. So you've gotten away with it this far because you've painted pretty people. But as soon as you enter the world where you've put a background in and it's turned into an illustration, full on book cover or what, how, what have you, you are now responsible for the, the world around the character as, as well as the character. And I, I have this instinct right now to just darken the chair one more time, just one more time and then erase away what I need. Just so I'm 100% sure I only illuminated what I needed. Um, I will darken with the black just like I did before. So what are the main key points you guys are taking away today? What are you taking away from this class? Anyone? The thing when you get, when you're talking about warm values like a, like a, a light, like a candle, there's always a center of it that's white. So be careful not to over yellow everything because it'll look tacky. Make sure that the centermost of each candle is, is white as well. You're not just using one monochromatic light source. It's not a yellow neon light or something. And most of the time, the things that get the light from the candle are more white than they are. Oops, lost it. Maybe that's too much, but we'll see. I feel like that's the kind of cast shadow this would cast. This little staff, which is actually leaning on. Sorry, I usually turn my phone off during class. I don't know why it's going off like that. And I've got the dark side. So what did you guys take away? When it comes to small dim light sources, less is more. Buttons and tufted things are radi radiated like corners of the mouth. Good. Um, light radiates and isn't just blaring all over, uh, lighting things up like a movie set. Good. Light is king. Good. Noob is a state of being, not just a skill set. Good. Um, <laughs> he's just Mexican. <laughs> so he's got that. <laughs> Mustache illustration is a mentality. I feel like it's more Spanish that you know that the bullfighter mustache. I feel like I'm confused if the candles in the background are coming into the foreground or if they are meant to stay behind the chair. If that makes any sense, I'm not sure. They look like they're behind the chair, and some have kind of like a volcano effect come down beside the chair. Um, disconnected because of internet obligatory rage quit. Oh no. Is illustration different than a masterpiece? No, for no, it's the same thing. Masterpiece, illustration. I'd say masterpiece is just a final form of an illustration. Yeah. Could there be multiple cast shadows here? Is there a bunch of candles? They work because they're so similar um, to each other. They're so close to each other and they're so similar in that they're all just candles. They're working as one light source. There's not going to be that many cast shadows and you really wouldn't want to do that um, just to keep things simple and easy for yourself. Shut up. Oh, yeah, you gotta turn it up and like, fucking vibrate. Uh, 
Um, and then maybe, maybe like if you wanted to, you could throw some extras, but you see it's kind of messy. I would do eventually just put this in. So there's that big dark one that I do right at the top. And then there's the one at the bottom. And then here, you can keep going. You can keep going from this point. Um, if you feel like you need to reveal some of the things in the background, if you feel like you have more work to, I mean, I feel like you have lost a lot of work just because of what I did with the staff. Uh, you could uh, go back and just work on these candles, just make them a little bit more rendered, clean these brush strokes up. This is not brush work. This is a, a just a mess, and that's where we're getting the light source. You could go in here and use some skin tones along with the yellow I put, though I think it's fine. Um, really, the best go-to for making this character look like a little boy which is one thing about that number five character is his mouth was so wide, right? Anyway, um, you could just shrink his mouth and that'll help you make the baby face. Oh, there we go, it's just too big. Um, let me just flatten. So, Atmosphere is what we have now. Mood is what we have now. Sides of the nose could use some, but I just don't want to get into it. The bridge of the nose shouldn't be catching that much light if it's a little kid. Um, eyes should be bigger and lower. But that's just some some basics that you can use. Um, another thing you could do is make it a little bit brighter behind the character. So let me show you. To kind of bring it, so that whole beige thing going on. So if you do something like that where the scene is a bit brighter and the chair is in the foreground, that actually might work. And you can just still bring back your framing sepia thing. It could just be a little bit higher. <clears throat> Okay, so that now we have a more like, you know, defined shape to the to the chair. And then now you can um, mess around with the texture of the fur a little bit better. So it actually looks like part of the fur. Oops. And not like all just plastered on or like stuck on. And that's part of texture is the silhouette. The silhouette is a big part of texture. Remember that anything in the shadows is blurred because there isn't enough light to reveal its sharpness. And that's it for today. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Let me show you the before and after. I'm just jumping the gun a little. <laughs> thank you everyone for coming. Bye. <laughs> that's not how we do. So before, so you just look at it and you'll see the problems. After, now we have a full room. The light, the glow of a light source fills up the room so it feels like we're actually in a room. Do you see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? The soft brush filled up the room and then us stacking the chair in the foreground a little bit. Hell, we might not even need those little lights on the sides of the chair. We can just put the whole chair in the foreground but because you know that the, the candles are in different spots as a vanishing point of light. And so what I wanted to show you with Portrait Studio is this. The, just a basic, actually, I'm going to go to secondary models. So a shape like that, that I'll rotate. Actually, this shape. So I'll delete this. Yes. Just more strict. A shape like this, right? And then we go into lighting. Turn that off. Bring one of these guys in. Place him just here, where's the strength? Get another one. Place him, or I should have just opened two and just moved him to the side. And just move the... Yeah, 
show the strap too. <clears throat> I'm just going to darken the background value just to black. And then just go back and limit just like I showed you before. So you're talking about light sources that do this. They're on completely different levels. Just be more organized than me, okay? So strength, strength, range, range. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you for the head, is that the light source really should, and then if you turn on volumetric for both, and just increase the density, you'll be able to see the effect of both light sources. So range goes up for that one. So you see the radius is basically the term here. And then same thing on this side. Right, so you can weaken it. And I only turned on the volumetric fog just so you can see the track. And so you can build this entire scene if you're still at a loss. You can build the chair out of the basic shapes. We will be adding that to um, so the update is coming where you can move all the shapes as one shape. I understand that that's really annoying at the moment to have to move every individual shape. But once you have it, always make sure you're saving your files just to keep it together. Um, But uh, I think I want I want to build the whole scene for you, but I am running out of time. <clears throat> I put the you know put put so you can put the floor. So you can get a big piece like a larger square and use it as the floor. Put the sword. You actually have a sword model in there. And then just decide what you want. You want the light to be behind. You want it to be darker like we had before. But if you're at a loss, you can always use Portrait Studio to help you. Because as much as, as as awesome as it would be, I'm the only one with my brain. I'm just <laughs> joking. <laughs> you can rent my brain if you want to. All right. So any questions? Um, Porsche Studio is on sale. Yes, it is. Thanks, Sabak. As always, I hope we watch the recording uh, like a loser because I missed the stream. <laughs> You're not a loser. <laughs> I love how you wrote loser. Yeah, it's called parenting. It's coming. Uh, can we merge more shapes together? Yes, it's coming, I promise. Um, that would be one. Is your brain on sale like Porsche Studio? <laughs> no. No, it's not on sale. Um, so let's recap on challenge news. Are you bored currently doing studies? Would you like to be challenged with a really fun, festive, holiday-themed character design? Well, Istabrax Reddit is right for you. Go to istabrax.com and click on the Reddit icon and stay tuned to um, within the next couple of weeks and watch the pins at the top of the, of, the, of the page to see the new character design challenge, creature design challenge, the, the Halloween themed one, Halloween. Or if you still think that, you know, if you, if you could do it in a week, paint and plan and, and, and get critiques for your book cover design challenge, the whole brief is gone because Reddit is bugged. But if you click on this little comment, you can read the whole thing uh, in the video. If you can pause and read, pause and read. I don't know what happened to it. I did not save it. I wrote it directly on the Reddit. Um, I, I think I must have saved it somewhere, but I, I probably deleted the text file. But, uh, but yes, if you learned something today and you want to give back, you can always support me on Patreon. If you join as a, uh, an apprentice, um, you can join us on Reddit. I mean, on Discord and get the assignments for this month. There's an assignment every month. It's like having a challenge every month. Um, and you get rewards as well. As well, you don't have to join as an apprentice. You can just join as a watcher. I'd appreciate it if everybody joined as watchers. Anyone who's part of Reddit, who's benefiting, who's gotten a critique, if you could send support um, our way for the benefit of the channel. Thank you so much for those who have 
is that all for her? and if you want to get portrait studio it's available on my store thank you everyone for coming i'll see you guys on thursday at 5 p.m eastern time <coughs> um bye everyone i love you guys very much bye